We are still, if it's still in hearts, take them like they're ours, then we'll leave our scars. We all kill, if it's killing time, letting life pass by, we're guilty of that crime. Oh, that's just how the story goes, the minute we're young and we get old, and if it's all No fear anymore 
I just need time to clear, clear my head Fires up, embers burn, can't pretend, yeah Satellites by the edge Burning up, spinning round till an end
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the playoffs. This is the first round of our playoffs for the Magic the Gathering Collegiate Star League Championship. Uh, I am your host, Rob AJG, and this is my favorite time of the year. This is where we start the journey to actually crown our champion, and it has been 12 weeks of just games, matches, uh, there's schools all across the country who have been competing for the opportunity to even enter these playoffs. So before we even begin anything, we do have to say congratulations to every single one of our 32 teams. But before we get into our deck tech like we do every week and into our games, we want to talk about how everyone actually got here. So we have Thomas College, we've got UC San Diego, which are going to be competing today. And the 32 teams have been playing, like I said, for the last 12 weeks, and only two teams, just two teams out of all of these teams are going to be able to go to Las Vegas to compete on the main stage at the at the Luxor in the HyperX Esports Arena, and that is going to be a trip that, I mean, it's a once-in-a-lifetime type deal to be able to compete at this level for a national championship. and. I played Magic for a long time. I don't know of any other like collegiate national championship for Magic for teams, so it will be an amazing time. Uh, today we do have UC San Diego, which is Triton Gaming, coming into the playoffs at seven and four. Um, and I am really is it is it seven and four or nineteen and two? I'm not sure. Like if that seven and four was like their seven and four overall, um, and it is. This is that opportunity where they're able to now go ahead, try to move on to that round of 16, because even if, you know, you can move on to round of 16, maybe you get eliminated there or whatever. It's kind of like March Madness. It's one of those things where it's nice to be able to say you made it to the Sweet 16 or you made it to, uh, you know, the Elite Eight, Final Four, those type of things. Uh, and I'm excited to see what Thomas College also brings today because they are both going to be competing for this opportunity to get to Vegas. And again, this is round one. Thomas College, eight and three. And you can see these all the weeks that they played. Uh, they had a, some teams had 12 weeks, depending on their um, uh, their actual division. Some had 11. And here you can see eight and three. Uh, they did lose to Northeastern, uh, had a loss to UMD and also oh, two, two losses uh, to UMD. Uh, but it looks like UMD has maybe two teams. So uh, three of three teams. Look, I see uh, thunderous snappers, meandering turp shells and the wandering tome shells. So um they went one and two against UMD, but today they're not going against UMD. They're going against the University of California, San Diego. And it is about that time where we're going to get into our deck tech. But right before we do that, let's give a big thank you to our sponsors. Our first sponsor would be HyperX. And as you can see, I've got my HyperX, <clears throat> my HyperX jersey on today. And the finals will also be uh, at the HyperX Esports Arena in Las Vegas. And we also want to thank GameStop because without GameStop, there just would be uh, very little uh, for us to be able to do. They've been a great sponsor. And they also have the GameStop Performance Center uh, where you can actually see how the best people in the games are learning how to be good, like how they're practicing, how they're uh, refining their skills and there's nothing bad about being able to learn from some of the people that you get to watch on stream, getting them to maybe see them in person. Uh, I still think that we have our uh, contest running to be able to um, have that meet and greet uh, and be able to train with uh, some of the guys from Complexity. So if you are a Fortnite player, you can enter into that. You can also, um, if you're a CSGO player, I believe that's also, those are the two games. You've got the GameStop Bootcamp and you can go to uh, the CSL website to find out more about how to enter, send your videos in and get that trip to the GameStop Bootcamp. And now let's get into our deck tech because it is every time we want to give you an idea of what everyone is playing and you can make you know decision for yourself who you think is going to win but i will do my best to give you an idea of you know pretty much who i think is going to be able to do it so we're actually going to start with the university of california san diego and we're going to start with the bez and now the bez is playing what is <clears throat> probably 
what I would say one of the boogeymen in the format uh, being able, and that is fires of invention. All right, so with fires, if you are unfamiliar with it, it's a four casting cost enchantment. And then when you play it, you're now able to play two spells a turn equal to the total number of lands you have for each spell. So if you have five mana and you haven't played any spells, you can play two five drops out of your hand. And in this deck, why that's so crazy is the five drops in this deck are creatures that are able to give themselves haste. And since you don't have to use mana when you put those five drops in the play, you can then spend that mana to give things haste. And if you look at Cavalier of Flame, uh, that's going to be the very first one. So when it comes into play, obviously it lets you draw a card so you can get rid of the things you don't need. But for two mana, you can give all of your creatures plus one, plus zero, and haste. So if you play two creatures and you happen to have five or six mana, six mana means you can pump everything three times and give them haste. And in combination with the other Cavalier, you have the blue Cavalier, which is Cavalier of Gales. Uh, the good thing about this is not only does it fly, but it also has this built-in draw three cards, then put two cards uh, back on top. And some of these hands are kind of clunky because you never need two fires. That doesn't do anything for you. So you want to be able to get rid of that. You want to be able to get rid of lands. Uh, above that, you're also going to have Kenrith. And Kenrith does a lot of different things. But the big thing that Kenrith does is that all of your creatures gain trample and gain haste. Uh, and that goes a long way because sometimes... When you're playing with these fires decks, they try to chump block your guys and being able to give them all trample helps. And Kenrith also gains you life in a pinch so that you can, you do have white mana in here. Uh, so you are able to go ahead and pay the three mana so that target player gains five life. Uh, but how do we get to that stuff, right? So you have to look at the four drops. We talked about fires, but one of the really essential four drops to this deck to smooth out your draws is Sphinx of Foresight. Uh, this allows you to reveal your... Uh, reveal this card, and then you can strike three to be able to set up these draws, find that fires so that you're able to go off. But the other good thing about this is that since it is a four drop, when you do play the fires, the turn that it comes into play, you can also play the Sphinx out of your hand for free. You're only going to get one spell on turn four. So it is nice to be able to do that. Now, this particular version uh, isn't playing uh, the Wrath of God. Uh, either of them. There's the red one that does four damage to everything. Uh, and then there's also the white one that allows you to um, it basically kills everything, and if you have a four-power creature, you could draw a card. So doesn't have that in here, but it does go in, if you look at our three drops, how we're getting rid of creatures and how we're getting rid of the madness before we can get to fires. The first one is going to be Deafening Clarion. This is just an entire beating for most of the aggro decks, being able to do three damage to everything and give your creatures lifelink so that when you have these later turns where you may have creatures out, you can then play the Clarion, deal three damage to everything, give all of your guys lifelink, and then attack with them. And usually that puts you over the top. Uh, you also have Teferi. Uh, Teferi gives you the ability to make sure your fires does resolve uh, when you're playing against the control matchups. And it also just, it's its nice to be able to sometimes cast a Clarion at instant speed, uh, be able to bounce things just to give yourself time. Because this deck is all about how am I able to get to turn five so i can cast some of these crazy five drops uh above that uh we are now this does have it is a four three but the big thing is that the stomp part of this card uh and being able to stomp out these smaller creatures again you just need time and bone crusher giant and stomp do all of that because on three it does you can for two drop you can go ahead and shock something at three you can go ahead and make the four three and then above this uh, you are going to see, looks like the 1x Brazen Borrower. And again, just make sure that you have time. And a couple other cards in here that are, are pretty interesting. There is an Omen of the Sea. Uh, I The cards I really haven't seen in this list, I've Omen of the Sea at 2, and then Elsbeth Conquers Death at 5. Uh, those are two cards that I just really don't see a lot of. Uh, but the third part of this saga, being able to take a creature from your graveyard and put it into play for free, uh, does seem very, very strong. Uh, but it seems like I most of the decks that you end up losing to are decks that are going really wide, so you usually want to be able to have more Wraths. And I only see one Cavalier of Gales. Uh, that is also uh, usually I, you're going to see in between two and four. Uh, I don't see many lists uh, with only one. So in the sideboard... Uh, you can see Giant Killer, Disenchant, Tithe uh, Taker, Aether Gust, Robber of the Rich, and Mystical Dispute. But this is, uh, I don't want to say it's a stock version 
of fires because there are a couple things that uh, the other fires decks do run, but this essentially is doing what every other fires deck wants to do, and that is cheat out cards that normally are, are not able to be played. So let's take a look at uh, the opponent of the Bez uh, from Thomas College, and let's look at Spaghetti. And Spaghetti is playing Mono Red, and here's the problem for Mono Red is you do have the key card in Embercleave, and Embercleave is really how you're able to get through. The problem is this Fires deck is packing Deafening Clarion. It's packing Stomp. It has those kind of things to be able to take care of uh, these little weenie creatures that come out. Now, fortunately for this Mono Red deck, it, the Fires deck doesn't have Wrath. Uh, so if we look at what the Red deck is doing, very, very common. We'll start in the one drops. Uh, and if we start with Fervent Champion, just a one drop does have first strike haste. Sometimes you get multiple of them out and then it just, just starts doing a bunch of damage. Uh, we do have uh, Scorch Spitter uh, and this essentially is a t another 2-1 uh, underneath that. Uh, now this is something, uh, we have Tin Street, is it, I'm trying to think, oh yeah, Tin Street Dodger. I always wanted to call it Tin Street Hooligan, but that's just uh, me playing Magic for way too long to start thinking about other Tin Street goblins uh but tin street dodger it is nice to be able to have unblockable things to be able to get through uh underneath that more one drops uh we're going to have infuriate and just a giant growth with a little bit less toughness uh but it does help to kind of mess up your opponent's combat math uh four shocks so that's just simple stuff uh, I don't see anything out of the ordinary in this red deck, but I do want to talk about the interaction um, in our three drops. So if obviously light up the stage, very good card, but this new card above it, this is the card that has really given mono red an edge to be able to have a little bit more sustainability. Annex Harden in the Forge is, is first of all, his power is equal to your devotion. So usually you have a lot of creatures out, but the thing is that if its power is four. And the, well, so let's just read it. So whenever Annex or another non-token creature you control dies, create a 1-1 one, one Seder token that can't block. But if the creature had power four or greater, create two of those tokens instead. So if you have a bunch of creatures out and you have an Annex, then you have this ability to make sure that all of your 1-1s one, get replaced. And Annex itself, if it is has a bigger power, then it's going to make two tokens. So just a lot of stuff uh, can happen with Annex so that then after they try to kill everything, you can untap, and then you can play the four drop, four mono red that takes you over the top. Granted, Embercleave can cost four, sometimes it can cost two, but it's more important that you get our triple red monstrosity out, and that is our two four Torben. And Torben, make sure that if a red source you would control would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent opponent controls, it deals that damage plus two. So now you're looking at all of those one drops become a lot scarier. You're looking at making sure those tokens that come out become a lot scarier. Shock, everything, Embercleave, all of it becomes a little bit more ludicrous when Torbrin is out. And Torbrin itself is a 2-4, and that triple red is not scary. So let's look at the sideboard and see what is available to us. Uh, we do have Claim the Firstborn, uh, being able to take your opponent's creatures and just get them out of the way. Always very nice. Red Cap Melee, uh, for the mirror, but also just for uh, lots of different things in green. Uh, Unchained Berserker, uh, I don't think I've seen this card in a long time. It's from M20, protection from white, and when it's attacking, it gets a bonus. So against the mono-white decks, that is, uh, that is a beating. Uh, there's also Tybalt to uh, prevent gaining life. Again, this is going to be a nod to that mono-white life gain deck. And then the two experimental frenzies. And this is just to make sure against those decks that are trying to kill everything that you have, that you can play the experimental frenzy and then try to go straight to the head. So that's going to be our first match. And that will be Fires versus Mono Red. And I'm telling you just from personal experience, that is not a great matchup for the Mono Red deck. But this particular version of Fires doesn't have all of the heat. Uh, so let's look into our second match, and that would be from uh, Pedesso uh, from UCSD. And for Pedesso, this deck is my baby. I love me some blue-white control. Uh, as you can see here, the idea between for, for blue-white control is just stabilize early game, don't die. And that's why you have uh, Birth uh, at 2-drop to be able to make 
the O4 wall, gain you some life, find land, because when you're playing these blue-white decks, it's just so essential to make sure that you get to your four drops and above. So that's where we start in our two drops with Birth. Uh, we also have Oath, help you to be able to draw some cards, scry, everything that you want. This is also playing four Dovin's Veto main deck, and that that's a lot. Uh, I mean, I've seen versions that have played uh, one or two. I don't know that I've seen any that play four, but if you're playing in a metagame where you feel like there's going to be a lot of spells that you can hit with this veto. I mean, it, it is very good. It does hit Planeswalkers. It's the things that kill your Planeswalkers. Uh, so it's it's not a bad card by any means. Uh, normals cards on our three drops with Absorb. Got to have the four drops or four of those. Teferi, another just must include. Uh, above that, we are going to see... Now, this is a card that people, even at the highest level, forget it's the first line of text because... Narset obviously does let you draw cards, uh, but it also prevents your opponent from drawing additional cards. So uh, I think at the uh, the tournament that was at DreamHack, somebody had a Teferi, like negative Teferi to be able to give, buy some time and draw a card and just forgot there was a Narset out. So just negative their Teferi for no particular reason. Uh, so that did hurt. So you got to remember that Narset does prevent uh, your opponent from drawing extra cards. Uh, we can see our next three drop above that, and, and that's going to be a Banishing Light. Just another nod to being able to deal with maybe opposing Teferis, things like that. Uh, in our four drops, we do have Shatter the Sky 3x, and that is the Wrath of God I was talking about in Fires. Uh, just to be able, you don't even care if they draw a card, doesn't really matter. Uh, you're just trying to get that card advantage, three for one, four for one, or better. Uh, above that, our other four drop uh, is going to be Archon of Sun's Grace, and just being able to put this into play, gain a three life, but whenever an enchantment comes into play, then it makes a two two. So this gives you, whenever you play your birth, you're getting a two two. You play an omen, you're getting a two two. Banishing light uh, and Elsbeth conquers death. All of those make two twos. There's only one of them in here, uh, but it's like a little. Uh, I mean, it's no Dream Trawler, but it's a little baby Dream Trawler. And Elsbeth conquers death. We saw that in our uh, fires list more removal, and then the ability to bring back in this deck, uh, bring back Teferi, Narset, and then you can maybe live the dream and bring back Dream Trawler. Uh, a lot of the blue-white decks are normally playing four Dream Trawler, only two here. Uh, the card is abusive, so if you have not seen this uh, on your side of the board or your opponent's side of the board, for some reason, it just has text on text on text. It's a 3-5, it has flying and lifelink, and when I first saw this card, I, I I didn't even understand that it had lifelink. I just like had PTSD or something and just blanked over the lifelink portion of it. Uh, it says, also, whenever you draw a card, it's plus one, plus zero. So when you draw your first card of the turn, it turns into a four, five. When it attacks, it draws another card. So that's a five, five. So five, five, flying lifelink. Oh, and by the way, if you discard a card, you can give it hexproof. Uh, so it does everything you want. This is, if you've played any mystery booster drafts, there's a card called uh, Control Wind Con. This is the Control Wind Con in standard, and that is Dream Trawler. Uh, let's take a look at the sideboard uh, for blue-white and see uh, what is cooking uh, in the sideboard uh, for blue-white here. Um, let us see what we have going on. There we go. Uh, we're going to have... Okay, we're going to have uh, Spectral Sailor and then, you know, most of our normal stuff uh, in blue-white. Uh, I don't see anything crazy there, uh, but let's do this. We're going to go through one more deck really fast. That's going to be uh, Thomas Co College's uh, Keo, or Keo. Uh, and this looks like it is the Teamer Reclamation deck, and it is just that. Uh, this is another deck that the idea here is ramp out your mana as soon as you can. You've got the four drop in Wilderness Reclamation, which allows you at your end step to untap all the land you control. And what this deck is trying to do is make just as much mana as it possibly can with this uh, Reclamation or multiple Reclamations so that then you can explosion your opponent, uh, which is going to be the card right to the right of it, and be able to do that uh, during whatever step you want to because it's an instant. Uh, so you are able to just fire them out of the game and that is the biggest game plan that they have you can also row them uh but most of the time the combo is this so 
I'm ready to get into our first game. I think our players are ready. And we are going to have the Bez versus Spaghetti uh, as our matchup. And that also is the same two decks that uh, Max Mick and uh, Cunning Tub are playing. So we're going to see this matchup twice. But the first time is going to be the Bez and Spaghetti. And I think we said our players are ready. And I'm ready to talk about some magic. So um, if we are going to go to our break right now. And then after our break, we'll get into our first match where one of these teams, Thomas College or UCSD, is going to go home and the other team is going to move on to the Sweet 16 right after the break. Yeah, just let me know when we're live. All right, we are getting ready. It is going to be ESD versus Thomas College, Padesso, Spaghetti. And it is the matchup we talked about. It will be the mono red deck versus the fires deck. And on the right side, we see uh, four lands. It does have Embercleave plus a couple of creatures, but the problem is for Spaghetti. No, Spaghetti knows that is going against. Um, oh, this is actually um, mono red versus blue white. So this is not the matchup I thought it was going to be. So this is much different. So with mono red going against blue white, this is a matchup that uh, for the mono red deck, you know. They, he knows that the blue-white deck doesn't have as many Wraths, uh, does have to dodge, um, you know, the Milkman and <laughs> making sure that he doesn't get um, basically just turned away by the, the two-drop. And the Milk is in the hand with a Teferi, uh, but there is... Oh, and then there is the Shatter of the Sky. So everything that you could possibly want for the blue-white player is here. Uh, the Veto is there for the Ember Cleave, but we do have... Uh, damage coming in early and often from the mono red deck. So, it, but it does appear that the blue white deck will be able to uh, not miss the land drop. So, I imagine that this two drop will be able to cast um, the birth, get some life back, be able to make the 0 4. All of these are perfect uh, options uh, for the blue white deck. And then being able to, on, on three, be able to get Teferi in there, uh, to be able to do things uh, with Narset, and then get into Wrath. So all the options are available and on the table uh, for Pedesso and for Spaghetti, just has to hope that uh, his opponent just uh, runs out of gas, but unfortunately, uh, the blue-white deck has plenty of gas going. So. I would assume on three, it would be a Teferi, uh, and it's possible to be a Teferi plus one, uh, so that you do have the, I mean, because bouncing it just means it's gonna instantly die, but uh, I mean, you could bounce the uh, the one one that doesn't have haste uh, to be able to make some time here, because you do have the O4 already out, so it just depends on cards. You could also uh, bounce your birth. Um, but then you would just lose your Teferi that way, but then you could play another 0-4, and then 
the red deck has to somehow get through two O fours. Uh, so that's always an option. Uh, but with a shatter the sky, I don't think that that's probably a, a, the best option there. Um, would just go ahead and uh, bounce the one one and draw a card. So the O uh, four will go ahead and take care of the one one here. You will lose your Teferi, but did draw a card here. So life total is at fourteen uh, for spaghetti. Um, or excuse me, uh, life is at 14 for our blue-white deck, and still, we'll be able to block here. Uh, the mono-red deck is sitting on only two land, uh, so that is going to be a small problem. So for the blue-white deck, uh, they don't have to burn uh, their Shatter the Sky just yet. Uh, we'll be able to play Narset and uh, be able to draw some cards there. Uh, here is the 1-1, one, one. and Gain two life, back up to 16. Very comfortable life. The issue now for the our blue-white deck is, can they draw some more gas? Uh, because Narset, we'll, we'll play an island here, uh, play Narset, draw some cards, and, and see what we can find. But the thing here is, if Dream Trawler can be found, have the mana to cast it, we'll be able to uh, get that party started. And if Dream Trawler resolves uh, this mono-red deck, doesn't really have any way uh, to deal with it. But, you know, the thing for the blue-white deck is there's only two Dream Trawlers in the list. So being able to draw to one of them could prove a little bit difficult. Here's Narset. And Narset will go ahead and look at some cards and see what we can find. But has to be a non-creature. Uh, so does find a Teferi. And there's nothing wrong with finding a Teferi. Now, the mono-red deck, unfortunately, is stuck on land still sitting on two but we'll be able to light up the stage um uh, because i'm pretty sure light up the stage does not say draw uh it just says exile so uh gets around narset you don't have to worry about you know any shenanigans there uh but for a mono red deck they know that this is not exactly where they want to be here we go exile the top two cards of your library does he find a land does not uh man that is that is a rough one so now another Fervent Champion. So, you know, with that coming into play, there's two. So they both would be two ones. Uh, so three damage would be able to get through. But sitting on 14, uh, drew another Shatter the Sky. So I'm pretty certain uh, that could feel okay possibly burning one right now uh, because your opponent is stuck on mana, sitting on two. Um, you're going to be able to get a three for one off the Shatter, uh, and Narset's going to be able to draw this, the, the card, I think, and you still have a backup Shatter, you still have Teferi, uh, have another Teferi, uh, so lots of stuff going on here, so I, I, would, uh, I would fathom that I would play a, a Hollowed Fountain tapped and just burn one of the Shatters. Uh, you lose your 0-4, but I, I think that's fine. Um, you have plenty of options after that because even if, um, well, I guess there is a robber of the rich. Maybe you want to try to get the robber, get one more card out of your opponent. You could just play, um, you could play, a, well, you're at 14. Yeah, okay, so going to go and play that tapped. That makes me think we would see the shadow of the sky. I was thinking the other option was you try to get that robber because you know the robber exists. Um, and where is it going? Going to go to the good attacks. Got to go to the head. Narset is the least of your worries. Uh, does hit an island. So uh, that's unfortunate. And now we're going to see Teferi starting to get busy. Um, this could be another situation where you cast Teferi. You could bounce the robber and, you know, you would be trading. Um your Teferi for a robber, but you have two Teferis in hand. And the idea here is you just have to get to your Dream Trawler. Um, Dream Trawler is pretty much unbeatable at this point. Uh, a Shatter this guy for the one single robber. Uh, okay. Um, well, Runaway Steamkin is going to be the next play. Still hasn't found a third land. And, oh, there's another Shatter the Sky in hand. Jeez. Uh, Safari is going to be able to come into play. And 
should be able to drop another land, which would be the fourth, so that you do have the ability now to cast Shatter at instant speed if things get a little too hairy. And for the mono red deck, it's going to feel really bad. We'll be able to shock. Um, okay, plays a... Was I? One, two, three, four. Um, yeah, so decided against having the, the mana up. Sitting at 12, knows that the only you know way they're going to lose this game is by just getting burnt out. Uh, so instead of taking the extra damage and having Wrath up, there's really not too much to be afraid of anyway. Uh, so there's the shock. Going to go ahead and take Teferi down. Uh, but there is an Elspeth Conquer's Death uh, in hand. Uh, but there's nothing to hit with it. Uh, because you have to, it has to have a three casting cost or above. And so that would hit the Ember Cleaves, but there aren't any Ember Cleaves in play. So now it's going to be, you can make one ones, could also play Teferi again. Oh boy, never mind. Uh, there is the Dream Trawler. So this is going to be the Windmill Slam of Dream Trawler. And it could immediately get a concession out of the Mono Red deck. But the Mono Red deck says, no, I'm not scared. You can't, you, don't you worry about me. I'm not scared of no 3-5 gain infinite life. Uh, so we're going to see uh, <laughs> what the mono red deck has against a Dream Trawler as well as a Veto up. Um, but essentially, uh, it's lights out for the mono red deck. There's, uh, there's really not too much you can do here uh, because even if you were to attack with a 3-3, uh, and then the Dream Trawler were to block, because this is the only play. It's like attack, the Dream Trawler blocks, and then you pump up your guy. But because the Veto exists, uh, can basically block freely, uh, doesn't have to worry about anything, um, because the Veto will be able to take care of all of that madness. So, um, and if, all right, so the Mono Red player's like, yeah, we're doing it. Get in there with this infuriate. Eh. That'll be that'll be a no for me, dog. And the veto will go down, but Ember Cleave. Nope. <laughs> but can we do that? If we put the mana, the problem is that if he sacrifices it, he's gonna have to lose the counters, right? And then it's just gonna get dumpstered by the Dream Trawler anyway. So like that's not not a real thing. Yeah. One one. Two two three three. Okay, no, that Yeah, and then the Ember Clee goes on and makes it a three three. It has double strike. So it could take the Dream Trawler down. All right, we're we're in business again. There we go. Get him! does gain four life, but the, the trawler is gone. Unfortunately, there's an Elsbeth Conquer's death. So uh, Elsbeth will be able, or Elsbeth Conquer's death will be able to drop down, take the Ember Cleave out, and then be a couple turns away from bringing back uh, the trawler. So with the three mana, I would assume that uh, Teferi will drop in and then bounce this 1-1 one -one back to hand. And the blue-white deck is still at 14. And the red deck has two cards in hand. So if, don't find, if it doesn't find a way to instant speed kill this Teferi, um, then you're going to have Wrath available, Shatter the Sky available to you at instant speed. So yeah, um, all of this is not golden. <laughs> so... Uh, Looking at the enchantment to see what's going on, it does have haste, so we will be able to get this one damage in, take out Teferi, but this is just going to be an untap, uh, shatter the sky, get rid of both of them, and then just wait until Dream Trawler comes back. Does draw another land, but I mean, at this point, that's kind of just rudimentary. You don't really care. Uh, I I'm surprised that, let's see. So, you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four, nine. So, like, if you, if you would have just played, could have played the Temple of Enlightenment tapped to be able to scry one um, and still be able to make a one one. 
Um, I mean, I don't know that the one one is going to matter too much. Uh, if there is a hasty goblin. Uh, won't be able to block it, but that's pretty irrelevant uh, in the grand scheme of things because Dream Trawler will be coming back next turn. Yeah, like the one one isn't going to be able to block anyway. Uh, well, I don't. Yeah, so <laughs> just making it now, um, giving your opponent the opportunity to make a mistake. So down to thirteen and incoming Dream Trawler with a plus one plus one counter. Can't give it loyalty, but why not? You know, four six time to only has three cards in hand, but they're all lands. Um, here is a Temple of Enlightenment can make the one ones. So now, uh, again, I definitely don't know now how with just an Embercleave, um, you'll be able to get 13 damage in. All right. And now the blue eye player knows that there's really, you know, nothing crazy going on because the one one didn't attack. Um, so we'll scry. I'm, you know, I'm not really sure exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, this is definitely concession time. Um, there's just not going to be a way. Uh, gaining six life, drawing an extra card a turn, and scrying is just a little bit too much. So here we go. For the mono red deck, uh, does have the ability to put in Tybalt, keep that life gain off, chain, uh, um, unchain Berserker. So the only way to get rid of that guy is with Wrath, because Teferi has white in it. So white would be able to, you know, bounce it, or excuse me, won't be able to bounce it uh, because of the white in the mana cost. Um, it's only costs two, so you can't Elsbeth conquers death it. Uh, Dream Trawler can't block it. So, yeah, it does everything you want to do against uh, this blue-white deck. And the, I, I don't know, I don't remember if the if the wall, I think the wall is an, an artifact uh, off of birth. Um, I'm not sure if it's white or not. I didn't really get to look at it. That, I never really had to worry about the color of the wall off of um, off of birth, but we are going to see what happens now. Um, didn't bring in all of the Tibbles here, um, but Tibble definitely gives a lot of um, it, it does a lot of work because when I first saw it, I was thinking, man, like this card isn't good. And then in the sideboards, it was like, oh, wait a minute, this card actually is pretty good. Being able to keep your opponent from gaining life uh, goes a long way. And essentially, I don't even know what the other part of Tybalt does. I just know that it keeps your opponent from gaining uh, life, and that's really all that matters. Oh, one mana on the... Uh, and here we go. This is much better. Uh, does have Annex, Robber the Rich, Shock, and Fury, and three land. Uh, the question will be, how many of these lands will he keep? I would assume you would keep two and see what happens. Um, oh, okay. I uh, Don't do it. Oh, okay. I was really thinking, I, you just never need four. Like, four is just unnecessary. So, like, two would cast your entire hand. You, I think at that point, you know, there's this ability to, you just never want to draw another land. I guess if you never draw another mountain, you're fine. But, um, yeah. Here we go. Uh, for the blue-white deck, there is a birth. Oh, and there is the card we were just talking about, Unchained Berserker. Pro-white, and when it's attacking, it turns into a 3-1. Gets underneath the blue-white stuff that it would normally try to maybe counter it or anything like that. Uh, birth is going to go ahead and get that planes, and I couldn't see whether or not uh, it was able to, um, if the, the wall... Is it artifact or if it's white? But we're going to find out right now. Uh, 04 colorless. Yeah, so that does Stonewall. Um, oh, man. Gets the Devout Decree on to... That is... This draw for the mono red deck was doing very, very well, but now it is pretty Stonewall. There's that fourth land that you definitely do not want. Uh, but we'll be able to attack. Uh, and once blocks happen, we'll be able to go ahead and shock... 
Oh, and can make your own birth. I don't know that why you need an O4, but you know, it's there for you. Uh, but whatever blocks here will be able to go ahead and shock the wall. Uh, but there is a shatter of the sky, two shatter of the skies, in fact, uh, right behind uh, this removal of the wall. So not looking good for the mono red deck because this is almost certainly going to be a snap shatter. And there it is. Both of these cards are going to. And now the mono red deck is sitting on one card in hand. The blue deck has th four cards, one of them being a an absorb. Uh, so essentially, spaghetti, or excuse me, the blue white deck is at 20 life. Uh, and there is also a Drake in hand. Uh, just everything that you can want. Doesn't have to do anything. Can just wait it out and see what they've got. Oh, there is Tybalt. And so Tybalt makes a uh, 1-1 one, one devils that deal one damage to any target. Okay, so there is the absorb. Can't let Tybalt resolve. And now it's just going to be a matter of getting 1-1 one, one to death, it appears. Uh, because now it'll be go and 1-1s one, are going to be in the future uh, for the blue-white deck. But here is the so pro-red 1-1. One, one. All right. Enjoy yourself. Fervent champion, come on through. And yeah, there will not be an attack because it turns out protection from red is pretty good against mono red decks. Um, so we'll be able to scry. And now it's going to be all about just making one ones. Yeah. Also, it just also happens to counter a spell that targets you uh, in case you want to go to the head. But 20 life. And for the red deck, this is one of those times where you just don't really feel good about it. Um, you, can, you can't even attack here first. Like, if you attack here first and Embercleave doesn't resolve, your guy just dies. <laughs> so you actually have to... I mean, granted, it won't matter this time, uh, but you probably needed to... Because you have five mana, right? So you could have cast it first, equipped, and then attacked to make sure it resolved. Uh, so that you don't have that problem, but looks like it will go through, uh, but there will be one ones now coming. And the Banishing Light will take care of the Ember Cleave. Uh, it also, I mean, it could just take care of the, oh, well, never mind. Don't have to worry about taking care of anything because Dream Trawler is going to take care of it all for you. So... One one is going to attack, and now somehow, some way, have to find his way through a dream trawler at 18 life. Doesn't have to block. Can now just attack, and with a pro red creature out to be able to absorb just a little bit. Uh, there is a shatter, but that shatter will neither of those shatters will almost certainly resolve this game. Um, it's just going to be all about the life gain. Uh, does go ahead and draw another card. So now we're looking at five five. Fly, oh my god, and then also picked up the, the baby, the little one, and can cast it, can cast it, and then on top of that, make a banishing light to eat the creature, which is going to make another Pegasus, so this is almost certainly a concession. Uh, just too much, too much uh, <laughs> going on for the blue-white deck versus the mono-red deck, and that's just a really, really tough uh, matchup. The Mono Red's uh, hands weren't weren't really that fantastic. Uh, did take down a Dream Trawler in game one, but, uh, you know, that was about as far as that goes. So our blue-white deck did end up on top. We still have other matches to go, but you have to remember, in this tournament, the way it works is we've got three person teams versus three person teams and you have to win two out of the three matches so even though the first match is over we still have other matches going to happen but those are not going to happen until right after the break will we will see our second group of players playing and i am definitely excited to see what's going to happen because i thought we were playing the uh Jeskai Fires versus Mono Red. So it did shake up a little bit, and we're going to find out what the next two matchups will be right after the break.
Welcome back, everybody. We are here in the playoffs. This is the MTG Arena playoffs. I am your host and commentator, Rob AJG. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't think I was going crazy uh, because I, I thought when our, our players were getting ready that I saw, um, you know, some cards uh, like Oko and things like that. But it was... Uh, probably because those these are banned cards. <laughs> so um, we're having a good time. Um, UCSD uh, looks like they are now up 1-0. Uh, Podesso with the blue-white control deck came through, beat the mono red deck, and now it is going to be time for our second match. And the big thing here is if UCSD wins this match, the entire match is over. It would be a 2-0 sweep. So. For Thomas College, their tournament life, their ability to get to the round of 16 is all on the line now. Can they get this next win? It's going to depend on what the matchup is. It looks like it's uh, the Bez versus KO. And when we talked about the Bez before, the Bez is playing the uh, Jeskai Fires deck. And uh, KO is playing uh, the blue-green um uh, excuse me, the Timor Timor Explosion deck. So in this matchup, the Jeskai Fires deck doesn't have anything main deck uh, to be able to deal with a resolved um, Wilderness Reclamation. So it's very possible that this is just, both of these decks are just going to look at each other for a minute and just kind of see what's going on. Um, for Ko, who is from Thomas College, does have Thassa's Intervention, uh, to be able to keep uh, this deck off of fires in game one. Uh, and in sideboard, there is a mystical dispute uh, to be able to deal with uh, the fires, uh, negate to deal with fires, uh, and also Aether Gust. So lots of stuff in this blue-green teamer list uh, to be able to deal with uh, what's going on. And I'm excited. It is going to be game one of our second match, UC San Diego, Thomas College. The Bez versus KO, and the Bez is going to be on the play, and KO's hand is not good. Uh, KO is looking at a Omen and a Krasis and knows the matchup, so knows that this hand is very, very slow, and that Krasis, this is not the matchup for it. So I would assume this would be a mulligan, but decides to go ahead and keep it, uh, knowing that this is one of the slower hands, uh, but uh, probably has play tested this matchup way more than I have. So we are going to see how it goes down. Uh, and here we go. I will almost certainly be leading with, um, with five lands in hand. I would assume that they would probably lead with the Fabled Passage, but it's also possible they don't lead with Fabled Passage so that... Um, now, I, I, I has to be Fable Passage. I was going to say you could like not leave with Fable Passage, and if you needed to shuffle something away from the top, that's, but that's not a thing. Um, but there is a multi five on the side of UCSD who's playing Fires, and uh, it is ugh, yuck. But being able, the good thing about this is that Mullen to five uh, does have Teferi, does have uh, the Cavalier, and just needs a little bit uh, to be able. Uh, to get back in this game, and Teferi almost certainly will resolve. Uh, and well, with no blue mana, yikes! No blue. That that hurts, Daddy. When when that happens. So uh, here is the island, and now there will be the ability to cast uh, Omen of the Sea. And the big thing here is if there's no island. Oh, there it is. Does find the island, and now can get Teferi down, and. Teferi, I don't imagine that, I mean, I guess you need the card. So you could just negative it to draw the card. If it dies, it dies. No big deal. Um, but I think just having, being able to get a card and possibly hit um, the fires is going to be very, very important uh, for the blue-green deck, uh, excuse me, for the teamer deck does have a uh, double brazen borrower to deal with some of this madness if the fires does come out, but that's only going to keep fires offline uh, for a little bit. It's not going to keep it on offline uh, forever. So we'll be able to do just that. 
negative three, draws a card, and now we're going to see <coughs> there's gonna has this growth spiral and doesn't have enough mana to be able to um, cast the explosion piece onto Teferi. Uh, has double Cavalier of Flame in hand and will be able to ramp up now, but we'll pay two life. Here's the Brazen Borrower. Uh, gonna go ahead and bounce to Fairy, and you know if you're the of <laughs> the Fires deck, that's fine. Uh, you are totally okay uh, with being able to play to Fairy again, uh, and then be able to draw additional cards. Uh, does find a Sphinx, but still has not found uh, the Fires. And if a Fires does find its way to the board, uh, this could be a very very interesting game. Uh, but the same thing can be said uh, for Keo, who's playing our team of Reclamation. If they can find a Reclamation, uh, this also becomes very, very interesting because has Krasis, uh has everything that you could possibly want here and will be able to bring back Brazen Borrower from its adventure to be able to start with the beatdown. Um, and the Bez will be able to stomp it down, but still, like, when your opponent has four cards and you have a full grip, now it's just a matter of, you know, they're not able to do anything, right? Like, neither of these decks have its combo going, so just going to keep searching. Has plenty of time. There is the Wilderness Reclamation and an Uro, so I would assume that both of these cards will probably stay on top. Uh, the Reclamation uh, is going to, well, is thinking, okay. I think it kept them both on top there. Uh, and no, it's going to go ahead and shuffle. So doesn't want the Uro there. Um, we'll go ahead and cast Brazen Borrower, and next turn we'll be able to have this Reclamation because he's got to get the fairy off off the board. Um, if the fairy's on board, the ability to really do really awkward stuff uh, with your Reclamation, um is turned off because you're only able to cast things at sorcery speed because Teferi is a fair card. So uh, sitting on four mana uh, for the Bez doesn't have fires, but does have the stomp. So I would assume that this stomp is going to take out this three one um, and then draw a card, but it's possibly you draw a card first. Uh, and then once you draw the card, you find out what exactly it is. Uh, and then, you know, go from there so that you'll, you'll have all the information that you need. So, and what do we got going on? All right, there's the stomp. And still has their own Brazen Borrower. And there's another, lots of flying fairies running around here. Uh, the Wilderness Reclamation could just get played. Um, I don't, I actually don't know that that does anything. So it's possible that you might just go with, uh, the crisis here, uh, put a big body, draw some cards, uh, Teferi could bounce it, but, um, there's gotta be threat eventually, right? All right. And here we go. Crisis will go ahead and get played. It's going to be X equals four. And. We'll find not too much growth spiral, but it is a 4-4. So it's going to be a little bit hard to uh, turn down the value that is a 4-4. We'll go ahead and get Brazen Borrowed. Uh, but I think if you are uh, KO, you don't have a real problem with that. Uh, you're actually pretty okay with it. Uh, there's a 5-drop here, and I would assume that I would burn this Fabled uh, Passage and then just play the Cavalier. Um, you could Cavalier for zero, but I would assume you're probably going to Cavalier for one and get rid of the Sphinx. But, all right, here we go. Cavalier, will the Sphinx go bye-bye or will the other Cavalier go bye-bye? I think if it's me, I would be tempted to burn uh, the Sphinx, but looks like, okay, so he did burn the Sphinx, still has the other Cavalier, doesn't have enough mana, to give it haste, but it is a 6-5. It is dangerous and uh, does have two cards on an adventure. So next turn, uh, can play the 4-3, give it haste, could play the 3-1 and give it haste. 
you know, lots of things are available. Uh, Teferi is sitting high and mighty on seven and need to find kind of as brazen borrower. So like you can brazen borrow the Teferi, play the wilderness reclamation, untap. Um, and that's all I got so far. <laughs> like, um, there's the possibility that you can just try to do something really silly. Like, you could play the one reclamation. You could, um, then cast brazen. You only have you've got two brazen borrowers, so you can cast the first reclamation. You can, with the other two mana, you can uh, cast brazen borrower, and you can bounce the uh, the cavalier. All your stuff's going to untap. Doesn't really matter. Then next turn, you can play the other cavalier. I mean, other excuse me, the other reclamation, and then brazen borrower the Teferi, untap for a million. Um, and I don't know how much damage you could do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so sixteen. So you could hit for fourteen. Uh, and you could like draw your whole deck. So. I'm sure somewhere in your deck you would be if you drew 14 cards, you would be able to uh, find the answer. So that's what I would have done, and I obviously could be missing, you know, some piece of the the math there, but that would be um, my game plan. And uh, in the chat, uh, Podesto says. Yeah, the blue white player is so lucky. Drew everything. Yeah, you did. You you did pretty good, son. Uh, finds a storm's wrath, uh, which isn't going to do too much here. Uh, Cavalier is still a six five and needs to find. Still has to find a way to deal with uh, the Cavalier flame. So could do it this way. Here's the reclamation and could play the other Reclamation on top of that and just do it now. See, I don't like this plan um, because this plan doesn't do anything. The other plan, like, I could hit him for 14 and then draw 14 cards, right? I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So we'll go ahead and just try to uh, kill the Cavalier and draw five cards. And that's fine, too. I mean, and didn't hit it for six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, okay. Discarding a card does have double Thassa's intervention, uh, but with the mana the way it is, um, Teferi will be able to drop again, but this time, we'll be able to untap and play a very large crisis. Um, it has to play Teferi. Like, has to play Teferi. Like, if you don't play Teferi, you're almost certainly uh, going to have a big, big problem. And even if you do play it... Um, you can't negative it. You've got to take it up to five uh, because you know that the wrath exists in the list. Um, so let's see, because like there's a like somewhere in his okay. There's the negative one to get rid of the reclamation, but like you don't care, right? Like if reclamation is out and you have a Teferi alive, like reclamation doesn't do anything. Uh, so I'm not sure I like uh, doing it that way. Um, yeah, one counter on Teferi, because I'm pretty sure Wrath hits all creatures and Planeswalkers, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so Reclamation will come out. Uh, Wrath will follow it. Yep, four damage to every creature and Planeswalker, which in turn just means four damage to kill target Teferi. And now we will be able to untap and have uh, Thassa's Intervention 2x, and that should spell the end of this Jeskai Fires deck because there's really no way uh, for the Jeskai Fires deck to get around um, double Thassa's intervention. Um, 
yeah, you could just let that resolve. It doesn't matter because you can cast a Krasis for pick a number. You can also play your own Brazen Borrower to block. Um, granted, he doesn't know that there's, you know, double frost or double double giant in hand, but um, I would assume even if you get hit for three here, you just take the three and then next turn um, you can play Krasis for a bunch and all right, so here's the Cavalier. This will get Thassa's intervention for a bunch. And that will hit for four, so we'll have to pay four in order to be able to get this to resolve because Thassa's intervention, I believe it, does it, it doubles it, right? Either way, will not resolve there. Still hasn't found a fires, but has pl plenty of giants. 4-3 incoming. And yeah, we're going to let that resolve. Could play your own 3-1 now to be able to block since they're tapped out. So you, um, I, I don't know why you would just take the extra damage. Like, there's no reason to take that extra damage there. Like, you can just play the 3-1 block um, and then untap play crisis for pick a number oh well there's an explosion so um one two three four five six seven eight nine has the other land for 10 so 20 minus 4 is 16 um won't be able to kill him this turn but can go ahead and just play um play this could play the steam vents and then cast a very big crisis here gain that life uh, is going to go ahead and Wilderness Reclamation here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. So I'm... Okay, two triggers. So one, two... Oh, okay, I did the math wrong. Because of the two triggers, here's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, and then lethal. Uh, that's only 16. What are you doing? Oh, no, it's 18. Okay, can I, I just couldn't, couldn't. <laughs> and draw your deck, sir. Draw your deck. Uh, so. Mold to five did get to draw lots of cards, uh, but unfortunately for the Bez use for UCSD, uh, we'll go ahead and lose game one. And now in sideboarding, it's going to become even more difficult because now he's going to have to deal with Aether Gust, Negate, Mystical Dispute. Uh, all of these cards are really the bane of the existence for this Jeskai Fires deck. Uh, Uro is going to be coming out. Um, Scorching Scorching Dragonfire doesn't really need to be in there either. Um, yeah, you just get to kind of just play a control deck. And for the on the other side, uh, for UCSD and the Bez, he's going to have to find some way to be able to get a Teferi to resolve. And it's going to be much more difficult uh, to get a Teferi to resolve. Even, I mean, granted, at least he's on the play. So it only has to dodge... Um, you know, the two drops uh, like Negate uh, well, also has to drop our Dodge Mystical Dispute. There's just a lot. Um, so getting it to resolve is going to be difficult. So Thomas College in a very good position to be able to take this second match after winning game one, uh, because game one was going to be the game that normally uh, Jess Kai Fires has the best chance to be able to win. But the Mulligan kept that from happening. And for this Jeskai Fires deck takes out all the fires and is going to try to play the control game and start hard casting things. So see how that works out. I'm I'm as you can tell by my voice, I am not terribly um, convinced uh, that that is going to work out for him. But everybody at home, UCSD is up one match to zero. They won the first match where the blue-white control deck took down the mono-red deck. And now we are in game two of, the, of our matches. 
and Thomas College is up one game to zero. And while they are looking at their hands, also, again, want to say thank you so much. Excuse, thank you so much to GameStop, to HyperX for being our sponsors. And uh, for the Bez, that hand is uh, not so good. And decides to go ahead and keep that. Oh, I didn't see. That hand looked a lot different than I saw. Okay. that The first hand was the mulligan. This is the mulligan hand. Uh, and this mulligan hand is, is just fine. Um, We are on the other side for KO. Uh, has a th- has a thirst. Uh, has a couple brazen borrowers. You know, not anything too crazy here. Uh, the Bez will go ahead and lead with a fabled passage. Uh, but there is the mystical dispute, and I would assume that we would see uh, needs the green first, right? So, just trying to think. If you lead with no, you you can lead with steam vents, and then if you draw um, the growth spiral, then you can just uh, play the steam or play the uh, stomping ground untapped. So leads with steam vents, and now for the bez, we'll be able to get a tithe taker in here. We'll take two for their trouble, and. Tithe Taker is now in, has this 2 1 ready to go. And we'll be able, as you can see, like, would love to have been able to, you know, cast this Brazen Bar, or excuse me, um, the Brazen Borrow to be able to bounce this 2 1, but it costs an extra mana because of the Tithe Taker. So, Mystic Dispute, still online though. So, even if they tried to cast Teferi there, uh, wouldn't work but a 4-3 we can do all of that so now the pressure is on um you know what do you do here do you just try to get rid of the 4-3 if you if you do uh you know the problem being is you're going to take damage and then to fairy comes right behind it uh so right now it's it's going to be attack see what happens oh there is the robber so now we're looking at a very much an aggro deck and has to decide if he wants to try to resolve um, this Teferi or he wants to try to get with this Robber. Like, he play Robber, it'll get Mystic Disputed. Um, but I think if it's me, I just attack with the 4-3 and a 2-1 and see if I can get anything out of him. And there it is, down to 10 now. Uh, so at this point... I know that he doesn't have Fireball. I mean, he's not Fireball. doesn't have Wrath. Uh, so Mystic Dispute will eat the Teferi. Uh, I still think I would have been inclined, even after I attacked, to possibly play the Brazen Borrower to try to get a Counterspell out of him uh, because I don't have this fear of all of my stuff dying. So... Oh, wait. Well, I guess the reason I say that is I, I don't know that you would keep that in unless you've seen this particular sideboard strategy. Um, but here we go. Steam Vent's going to go ahead and enter play tapped. We'll go ahead and tap. And I mean, the damage is going to actually start getting a little silly here. Um, we'll be able to play a Steam Vent's untapped uh, and then play. The robber of the rich, but you have to play the land first, untapped, so that if you need to play three extra, you can. Or the mystic dispute, but says whatever. I don't need that. And here is the attack. It doesn't bounce the robber. Uh, I didn't see what got. And you can play that. Okay, so. Is going to go ahead and take some damage. We'll end up taking two here and then taking four more to go to four. Um, yeah, it is uh, not looking all that hot because I don't think he's played a land yet. And if he hasn't played a land yet, gets to play that untapped and then just play it again. And here it is. There's the four three. And even with this mulligan, uh, it is looking 
just fine for life. And how do you deal with the giant? You don't. You concede. I'm out of here. Tired of getting beat with these creatures. And yeah, no outs here uh, for <laughs> for Kiyo. Uh, so looking at that Storm's Wrath, like, oh man, I should have kept these in. Uh, but it was a it was an easy guess to think that the Storm's Wrath uh, wouldn't be available. Uh, so it is tied up now, and the Bez makes it a match. Is there any possibility to bring back in Fires of Invention? Probably not. So it is now time. This is the decider. Thomas College must have this match. Must have this game. Otherwise, they will be eliminated and they will be sent home. And I believe sent home to Maine. <laughs> they don't want that. They want to get this to a game three. And as we look over for the Bez, the hand looking mighty fine. There is that same tithe taker. And we saw just how good it was in the first game. And now we're going to see just how good it can be in game three. Go ahead and is scrying three right now. But the hand is very, very good uh, for the Bez. Very aggro. Um, it's just going to be a matter of what can we, what's the next couple of things? You know, how can we, that looks like three lands. Uh, so those are all going to go to the bottom, get rid of them. Well, wants to keep well, a scry land? I don't think so. I think you just go get gas. Get the gasolina. Here is a Temple of Triumph. We'll go ahead and keep a card on top. And now it's going to make things much more interesting because the two drop will be tithe taker and that makes everything a little bit more expensive and you're very happy to get this two one rocking and rolling it does have afterlife uh so when you even when you do kill it uh it it does a little, little, little baby behind a little baby is going to fly over and smack you upside so here we go to one. Uh, here is a growth spiral and can't of uh, can't even play the growth spiral because if he played the breeding pool and well, wait, I'm confused. Why didn't he play the breeding pool untapped so that he had the ability? Oh, he, so he could play. OK, he still play Mystic Dispute, because if you play Teferi, um, Mystic Dispute uh, just costs two. So uh, instead of all that, I would just play a land and get the bone crusher in and and see what you got put him to the test see if he has wrath because if he doesn't have wrath then if, even if he does have wrath you get to untap play to fairy so bone crusher giant is the play looks very much like what we saw in game two where it is bone crusher giant it is tithe taker the four three and the two one putting the smack down putting that pressure on to keo making him have to do something right now and there is the wilderness reclamation so here we go. 4-3 and 2-1 incoming. And as you can see, the hand for Kiyo has no answers for this. Uh, so I would imagine we would see another attack. But this time, maybe you cast the Robber of the Rich first. Uh, because it does have haste and get that life down to 10. Make him burn. Uh, a mystical dispute, something of that nature. Get these counter spells out of the hands. It's possible you could also just um, get rid of your uh, fable passage and go ahead and play the Sphinx, um, and then leave the cheaper stuff in case there is a wrath. Uh, you can come at, you can come right back with a haste creature and the four three. So I think I like that actually better. So uh, I would attack first with the four three and the two one. See what he has. See if he does anything to it. If he doesn't, crack the fable passage. I'm going to do it the other way around. Plays the robber of the rich. Uh, knows that the robber uh, can't be, uh, well, it could be mystical disputed, but will he burn it? And does not. So now, going to be able to get eight damage in here. And finds a brazen borrow. Oh, boy. 
that's that's a nice one. Because uh could pay two mana here and uh and bounce the wilderness reclamation after the crack. We'll need another island. There it is. And here we go. Brazen Borrower is going to petty theft onto the reclamation. Uh, it's possible that you could see what pays three for the growth spiral here. And then will Mystic Dispute. Okay. All that's fine. but still doesn't have any gas here. And Lethal is on board. Brazen Borrower can hit the 2-2, the but if he does it this way, let's see what he finds. Uh, a whole lot of nada. Probably will go ahead and end up discarding two lands here. I you're at I mean here's the thing you don't you're I don't know that you're going to need any of those extra lands <laughs> like at this point you are in deep deep trouble sir because you'll have two mana to brazen borrower uh and hit one of these creatures but the problem is uh once you do that the red white deck will be able okay going to go get hit this uh hit the tithe this will enter tapped, be able to untap. We'll have access to another Mystic Dispute. Uh, oh, my. So didn't draw the other land, uh, but that's okay. Attack for six. Or no, play the Tithe Taker first. No, play, uh, if you play the Tithe Taker first, he can make him pay more mana. Um, but So here's the Tithe Taker. Going to go ahead and take it down to two. Remember, the stomp is in hand. So... Should probably play the Tithe Taker now. See if you can get him to burn his counterspell and then burn his face. No, not that one. No. Tithe Taker. <laughs> Don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. There you go. Tithe Taker is in. And the Mystic Dispute will certainly get burned here. And then that will be match. No. Let's it resolve. Next level, but can never tap out from here on out. If he taps out uh, as the Reclamation player, he loses. Will auto pay has two mana, and that's in response. You should shoot him because he only has two mana available, so cannot Mystic Dispute anymore. There are no counter spells that he can cast for two mana underneath a Tithe Taker. Uh, and there it is. There is the stop. Goes ahead, gets the W in two sideboarded matches, going aggressive, taking out the fires, gets it done for UCSD. And that is it. UCSD is going to end up winning 2-0 to move on to the round of 16. And it was very exciting because, you know, you saw that game one where the Jeskai Fires deck ends up mulliganing, uh, tries to battle back, ends up losing anyway. Game two goes into the aggro deck and, you know, his opponent doesn't think that's there. So sides out the ability to deal four damage to everything and have that wrath not there, gets beat down. And then the Tide Taker makes another appearance in game three. And it looked as if Tide Taker plus Giants were just too much for Thomas College. So congratulations to Thomas College for finishing in the top 32 by making it to the playoffs. But it will be UCSD moving on to the round of 16, continuing their journey on to the playoff 
you know, their playoff uh, life is still alive. They are now able to still say that they can make their way to Las Vegas, be one of the two teams invited to the Luxor at the HyperX Esports Arena, and where we will all see each other. They will be cast on Twitch, and we will be having all those festivities live from Las Vegas. But there is no third match. Uh, because when you win 2-0, there's no tie breaks uh, when it comes to uh, the brackets. It is just UCSD moving on. So thank you, everybody, who tuned in today. We had a great time. Again, thank you to our sponsor, HyperX and GameStop, for making it so this 2020 season has been going off without a hitch. And remember, we do more than just play Magic here. We have tons of other games that are available. So if you like a video game, and it's an eSport. We probably are playing it somewhere in CSL, somewhere in the country, on a university uh, ground somewhere next to you. So if you don't have your school signed up, please look into CSL. Get your school signed up and have your chance, maybe, for 2021 to play for a national championship. But I've been your host, Rob AJG. You can find me on all of the socials. That's where I'm at. Feel free to, if you have any questions, any comments, would love to hear from you. But Until then, next week, our playoffs will continue as we get that march to Vegas going. I've had a great time, and we will see you next week.